Good morning. I'm Hillary Mason, and I'm a scientist at Bitly. Um, my Twitter handle is hmason, so I hope you'll be able to tweet at me while we talk. And I'm going to talk about a data-driven look at the real-time web. Um, let's move on. The first question everyone asks is, what is real-time? Uh, and for the purposes of this conversation, I'd like to use a definition that means we're talking about data that is constrained by temporal context. That means that we're talking about data that's relevant. Like, if I told you that there would be free cheeseburgers here until 1 PM, that's relevant. Um, but if I told you that there are approximately 15.6 billion cheeseburgers sold per year in the United States, that's not real-time data. It's an irrelevant fact that was astounding to me. We're also going to talk about platforms. And I love to think of our, our real-time web platform as a trampoline. And it's a huge trampoline because each piece of it bounces. And that momentum changes the way that the other people are bouncing. The data moves from one space to another. Um, and it, it evolves and changes as it goes. So while I'm up here on the stage for this brief 10 minutes, there will be nine articles created on Wikipedia. There will be almost 350,000 tweets. And I hope we can get that up, so send me some messages. There will be over a million clicks on Bitly links and almost 300,000 new links created in the system in this nine minute period. And this is growing really rapidly. We can fit a beautiful polynomial curve to this. But this is indicative of all of these platforms. And our Bitly data is really interesting because it's diverse. It comes from many networks. We have no single data source that's more than a single percentage point contributing. And it's timely in that it, we see it before most other people do. Mix that all together, and we actually crawl it, so we have really rich content to work with. So part of my job is figuring out what that data looks like and what we can do with it. So I was really curious about what people were talking about. And it turns out about 28% is about technology news, and that's probably largely the people in this room. About 10% is about business. And then the, the next 15% is uh, Brad and Angelina and Justin Bieber, and uh, you know who you are. Uh, every social network seems to converge on that. And my favorite stat right now is that 0.3% of links are about the weather. And this is a consistent value across time. No matter how the volume grows, 0.3% are about the weather. So it's also really interesting to look at what happens when something happens in the world that crosses networks and crosses country boundaries. Uh, and like the recent volcano eruption. I won't try to pronounce it. Um, but if we take a look at the data around it, we see our, our usual volcano volume was about 300 unique documents per day. All of a sudden, around April 14th, there's this huge spike, oh my god, eruption. Um, and then it got worse because there were all of these travel complications and sad stories. We see this spike of 18,000 unique documents about volcanoes. Um, and then that starts to plummet because we all have short attention spans and we lost interest. The really interesting thing here, though, is this bit at the end where we have gone from talking about one specific volcano and eruption to talking about volcanoes in general. So this single event has changed the new norm for volcano documents. It's now around 1,000 documents a day. And there are things like your volcano safety kit and your volcano travel package. Um, so, so it's had a huge effect, effect on the global communications around volcanoes. And if we look at this against something we're all a little more familiar with, like normalized lolcats, um, you'll see that the flow of information back and forth is also, uh, also pretty interesting. Another really cool uh, segment of data to look at is location. So your location affects how you use the network. So I'm going to show you two graphs here. Um, along the bottom, the x-axis is midnight to midnight on an average day. And along the y-axis is normalized volume of traffic by location. And one of these is New York City, and one of them is Washington, DC. So just take a few seconds and see if you can figure out which one is which. So you'll see the one with the spike at 9 AM, the spike at noon, and the spike at 5 PM. That's Washington, DC. The culture there is much more regular um, than in New York, where you'll see uh, party time there in the evening uh, going till about 1 AM, and then that slope as everybody finally goes back to sleep. And it, I just love that you can see the culture of an entire city by looking at the volume of traffic around the way people communicate there. 
So I also did a little search for who's talking about Web2 Expo by country. Um, and it's not at all surprising. It's mostly here, but this is clearly a global event. It's very popular in Australia, which has a similar conference happening now as well, um, off in the UK, and then on from there. Uh, so this is, uh, this is pretty cool. I also wanted to mention that now 9.8% of our traffic is from mobile devices, and that totally changes the way people are using and sharing the data. And that number is trending up quickly, um, especially with the iPad. We also just had a new release at Bitly. It's called Fugu. You should check it out. You can now search your history and uh, create your own personal analytics around your, your own data. And you can check out Bitly TV, where we're exposing trending topics uh, through the segment of data that is videos on Bitly TV. It's bitly.tv. We're hoping to do more of this soon. And that's it. I'm Hillary Mason, H at Bitly, or H Mason on Twitter. Let me know what you think.